Welcome back, everybody. I'm Jay. He's Maddie. This is Yankee and the Brit. And we are going to preview week eight, which for me and Maddie is a face-off week between our teams. <laughs> but we will get to that. Let's start with Packers Cardinals. And I got to be honest, up until the news yesterday, I was taking the Packers in this game. I had the Packers in this game. No questions asked. I thought the Packers were going to come in and just um, being a Thursday night game, more seasoned uh, team that's played together longer. But without Devontae Adams and who else knows might end up on a COVID list, the care are, are the Cardinals are rolling. This was nothing against them picking against them. But now I got to go with the Cardinals with the new news coming out about Devontae Adams. I think I was going to go with the Cardinals anyway during this game. I, I, I like them a lot. They're putting together whole games. I think – like that's what they that's what they're seeming to do. Whereas the Packers for me aren't putting together, they aren't weaving together games like where they play well through all the quarters. And against a high octane team like the Cards, you have to do that. But with Devontae Adams out, pretty much he's gonna be out, isn't he? With Devontae Adams out, then that's the only guy that Aaron Rodgers seems to throw to. So what what do you do with what do you do with that? You don't really have anything to go to. Whereas Fantasy the cards fans, are coming with their full stack, <laughs> which is they come. With, the cards are coming with their full stack team, and it's in Phoenix as well, which is a big deal. Um, if they're going to Lambo, I'm feeling more better for the Packers. But in Phoenix, Arizona, without Devontae Adams, with the way the Cardinals are playing at the minute, it's got to be. It's got to be the Cardinals in a close game because of how seasoned the Packers are. <clears throat> I I think it'll be a great game, which means it'll probably be a blowout. Um, <laughs> but that's the game, uh, one of the games besides our game that I'm most excited for this weekend because the Vikings game always goes without being said is my favorite game of the week. But I'm really excited for the Packers Cardinals. I think it's a really great Thursday night game for us all to get excited for. A lot of shit to talk before the game. It'll be good fun. Yeah, and did you see that power ranking that somebody put in one of the groups today where you commented, if Dak Prescott is number two, then stop I reading. Quit. For the record, it's because that guy's an ass clown who always says ridiculous shit, the same guy, but we won't get into that, that I intentionally comment on his stuff. But I'm okay with Dak being in the top five, but that guy cannot get it from me. Yeah, so, so, what, so what was wrong with that? I, Obviously, Cowboys fan, Jack Prescott in the top two. I'm all right with that. The issue was, Kyler Murray was 10th. Kyler Murray's absolutely balling, and people are saying he's only 10th in the power rankings of... And I know it's just, I know it's just a guy on Facebook, which is not where all of our sources come from. Please keep on listening to us. This isn't... We, we listen to proper people as well. We just like to address Facebook drama that happens in our spheres of where we post these videos and a lot of the time on our videos, we get a decent amount of what the fuck are you Well, and for the record, me and this guy go back and forth with each other intentionally on our posts for fun. <laughs> so nobody take it as we really hate each other. It's all in fun. <laughs> well, honestly, man. Hey, Kyler we're both Murray Vikings fans and we go at it. Kyler Murray is top three. Kyler Murray is top three on any power rankings at the minute. Put them in whatever order you want. Brady, Murray, Dak wherever you want to go with that. Like, I'm sure Dak's probably not in the top three for most people. Lamar Jackson, the way he's been playing. For this guy, Lamar Jackson was 14. So that just kind of shows you where this guy's at with his QB rankings. So don't take too much of it. Yeah, and it's not a shot, but like, it wasn't a shot at Dak, but I'm thinking, you don't put Josh Allen up there? Like, I mean, where are we yeah, going? Josh, it's like, yeah, it's so. like, Josh Allen's on a bye week, so he doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, that's who I was trying to, I was like, I'm sure there's another guy. Yeah, Josh Allen is in the top three as well. But Kyler Murray's a fantastic quarterback. He's he's just playing some of the best football he's played in his entire life, obviously. Um, I'm still so amazed at the fact he's he's my height. He's five foot nine, five foot ten, and can see over the top of those linebackers. I, I did a test the other day to see how hard this would be because I, I thought everybody was making a bigger deal of it than they actually were by <laughs> it's a really this is how much i research for this podcast obviously i tried to stand behind as many six foot three six foot four people as i could during a meeting at uh like during a meeting or just like walking down the street or at work 
Um, I like to stand behind six or three, six or four people after I found out that Kyler Murray was the same height as me. And you can't see. So how does he run his offense? Throwing lanes, man. Throwing lanes. And good thing your your uh your offensive line never stands straight up or they're in trouble, right? They always got a little bit down for you in that throwing. <laughs> But it's still the Drew Brees thing, and Drew Brees is still three inches taller. But it's those lanes. you got to get in those lanes, and those two are amazing at being small guys and finding those lanes. Yeah, luckily, he can also throw the ball up to Hopkins, who seems to always find a way to be open. So that's that's quite a nice thing to do. Uh, just a quick thing. J.J. Watt is smashing it against the Texans. J.J. Watt went off, and now that makes the cards even more terrifying, the fact that J.J. Watt is playing ridiculously well. Yes, that team's good. I just gave the Packers the win be- with uh, before the news in my head because of they've been there, they've done that, they've been together yeah, longer. But without Devontae Adams, man, like I said, I can't ride with the Packers. It's going to be the Cardinals. I still think it'll be a pretty good game, though. I don't think it'll be a blowout, but who the hell knows? Yeah, I, I really like I really like the Cardinals this season. And I, that's not to say that I don't like the Packers, but this game will be a close one, and I'm going for the Cardinals. All right, and just so everybody knows, on to our next game, Eagles versus Lions, and right there I have it for you guys. Three, two, one. one. Upset alert. Lions <laughs> get their first win against the Eagles, and they are not going to go 0-17. I've actually I've gone for the Lions in this one as well just because of how shitty the Eagles are playing and how well the Lions are playing. It's It's – for me, it's not a crazy... That wouldn't be the most upsetting upset ever. That's like how the Titans last week, everybody was calling an upset as well. I, and I was like, that no, no, it's not an upset. But the Lions shouldn't be getting... Shouldn't win against the Eagles with the talent both rosters have on either side of the ball. But Jalen Hurts is throwing under, has thrown under 60% in his last two or three games, I think. And... The Lions are just playing incredible football against some really good football teams at the minute. You've got to think one time the ball won't bounce back off the post for them or it won't creep in for the other guy or the refs will give them a good call or something like that will happen this season where they'll be in a close game and they'll have enough to get it over the line. Yeah, I think Dan Campbell's been coaching his ass off. I think the Lions have been playing their ass off. I think they just have a lack of talent, which will get fixed over the years. And I think they're probably heading in the right direction. This is the most excited I've been for Lions and Lions fans in a long time because it actually looks like the culture of the team is changing. And once you change the culture and get the right players in, everything will be good for the Lions. I don't know. I ain't got much more to say on that except for Lions pride gets their win this week. Yeah, and they've got a lot of stuff going for them already they like they've got some young talent in that defensive line that seems to be coming off well penny souls playing well on the offensive line they've got a decent offensive line and they've got two running backs they've got a nice running back stable that lots of people are after Deon, deandre swift i've told i've waxed lyrical about him now for a couple of weeks and i think he's a really 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 talented running back quite overlooked because he's in detroit and is it williams is the other running back it's, it's jamal, like jamal williams, williams ex Packer. yeah jamal williams has got a first down on 30% of his carries so far this season. How insane is that a stat? 30% of his carries so far this season. Obviously, I'd keep obviously keep giving the ball to DeAndre Swift and then keep uh, Williams in the kind of uh, Tony Pollard role that the Cowboys have got going on uh, at the minute where he just bursts a massive one or gets his first down and to be doing it on between 20 and 30% of your plays is an incredible stat. Well, since you brought up Tony Pollard, we'll go to a game <laughs> that Maddie cares nothing about this week, so we probably shouldn't even talk about it. <laughs> the Cowboys versus the Vikings. I know me and you could go back and forth with stats for days and players and whatever. There's been one stat I've been waiting to give you for eight weeks because you gave me a crazy fucking look like two months ago when I said this. When we were doing our preview of the season, and breaking down teams. I made the comment that the Vikings have had the Cowboys number at home. And I not that I say that all of historically matters, but since you guys won your last Super Bowl, the Vikings are 5-2 and two against the Cowboys when playing at home. That's all I was getting at, but I wasn't going to drag that up during that because that was a long podcast. <laughs> and you gave me such a look. I was like, 
Okay, he'll get it. When we get here, he'll get what I'm saying. I get, I get That's what you're I saying. That's all I meant by they got your number at home is five and two since you guys won your last Super Bowl. I get what you're saying, but I'm pretty sure we played you guys at home last season and beat you. But, you yeah, know. But but five and two <laughs> cents. Like, all I'm saying is if you're going with that. But that's okay because it's got short term memory. I've got a short term memory. I, I don't care about what happened before we I was both, born. I'm sure 100% believe right now that our team's going to win. Yeah, 100%. I, so, I, and I can give you 55 reasons why I think the Vikings are going to win. You can give me 55 reasons why you think the Cowboys are going to win. The only thing I think the Vikings got going for them right now over you guys is there's a 50% chance Cooper Rush plays. I don't care what anybody says. Look at calf injuries through the league. Take way more than two weeks to heal. And even if that plays, does that calf keep him in the pocket? But either way, I think luckily, that's where I think the Vikings are in a little bit of better spot. Yeah, yeah. But I'm not I, I think luckily Dak Prescott's game, calf injury came at the end of the game, so he couldn't get aggravated. And it's I would say it's not necessarily a calf injury, more just a kind of twinge that because of his other injuries this is what i see right now maddie please god no (laughs) (laughs) i remember when i saw that boot i was like oh for god's sake uh but it's it's just like i think it's a more precautionary thing than a genuine car we'll find out tomorrow yeah uh, we will find out tomorrow. tomorrow yeah we will find out tomorrow and if dak plays I can see it only going one way, but if Dak doesn't play, I do not trust Cooper Rush. And the only reason I want de- Dak to play just so you have to fucking eat it. Yeah, the only reason our defense is looking so good at the minute is because when they take the ball away, which is what they've been able to do, we've been scoring on those turnovers, which then put the game out of the way, which means we can then you know, like use our running game to its full effectiveness and that kind of stuff. Without getting crazy and arguing players and stuff, because like I said, me and you can go back and forth for days on our (laughs) teams. We both have bend but don't break defenses. We both have get after the quarterback defenses. I I know the Vikings are number one in sacks and quarterback pressures, but I think you guys are in like the top six right now in pressures. Maybe not sack, but I was reading something. Like both of our corners are all, both of our secondaries, give up big plays, but yet give turnovers. Like we're mirroring, not images, but we mirror the type of defense we play. We mirror the type of offense we play. So I don't think it's going to be an X's and O's games. It's going to be a Jimmy's and Joe's game. We've been a similar team. We've been similar teams for like what, three or four years now? Like since Dak Prescott came into the league, the Minnesota Vikings and the Dallas Cowboys are the same team. Because so it's Jimmy's Dalvin and Joe's, not X's and O's. Yeah, because of Sunday Dalvin night. Cook and Ezekiel Elliott. Dak Prescott, Kirk Cousins. Like they're very, very Even similar. Even the backup running back still. Madsen Pollard are both really yeah. good, right? Like yeah, so exactly. receiving cores, tight ends. It's Like it's CD like- Lamb and Justin Jefferson will be connected together for the rest of their football playing lives. That is how that is, they're similar teams. They were both going for catch of the year last season. They were both attempting to go for rookie of the season. Justin Jefferson deserved that over CD Lamb. I'm not like I think the only thing we can agree on is this will probably be one of the better games of the week. I, it, there's a reason that it's a uh, prime time. There's a reason that it's prime time. And what I'm going to say is, and I know you're going to hate this, and I kind of hate this take as well a lot of the time, but I just want to say it just for the sake of saying it. But Kirk Cousins during prime time is not as good as Kirk Cousins outside of prime time. Thoughts? Dak Prescott this year doesn't have the stats that Kirk Cousins has. I 100%. He's going to throw all crazy shit. 100, 100%. Kirk Cousins has won his last two primetime games and a playoff game, though. <laughs> yeah, I'm just exactly. saying, they give, exactly. and I'm not saying you're wrong. What I'm saying is, and I hate defending him on this, but Kirk Cousins' primetime record in Washington compared to Minnesota are completely different. Yeah, and I think the issue here is when we're arguing Cowboys versus oh. Minnesota. By the way, guys, I was not saying Kurt was a better quarterback than Dak. What I was saying is we were throwing out crazy stats. Uh, Dak is a better quarterback than Kurt Cousins, by agree. the way. Like I know I don't you agree. don't. I was just he, trying to be nice to you. but Yeah, yeah but that, Dak is a better quarterback than Kurt Cousins. It's, I mean, if you fine. live in the UK and you don't know football, I agree. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. He is 100% a better quarterback than Kirk Cousins. Anyway, um, <laughs> uh, 
Oh, where was I going to go with that now? Um, I don't know. I got you, Maddie. I got yeah, it right the there. The issue is, the issue is when me and you argue Cowboys versus Vikings is we both love each other's teams. Like we both, the way that we kind of evaluate each other's teams is we look at their rosters and we're like, yeah, like I would say, like I would cherry pick players from your roster in the same way you would cherry pick players from mine, but then we wouldn't lose we wouldn't lose anything by getting each other's players a lot of the time. Like the Cowboys don't lose a lot by having Kirk, uh, Kirk Cousins at QB. Well, and we have the same like, strengths. Yeah. yeah our exactly. linebacker cores are our strengths. Our quarterback play this year is our strengths. Our running backs are our strengths. It's weird. It's just weird. This will be, this should be and will be a very, very, very close game as long as that Prescott and- isn't injured. We're both going to be stressed out of our minds, and one of us is going to be sick as fuck after the game. It's my birthday on while that game's being played. Because obviously, when those prime. When well, now those you're going to make me feel games, bad for smoking you. I'm just letting you know when those prime time games happen, because of daylight saving now, it'll be 20 minutes past midnight in the UK when that game kicks off on the 1st of November, which is my 24th birthday. So wow. if. So I'm just letting everybody know. If Jay bullies me, then he's bullying me on my 24th birthday is all I'm letting I'm not above that. I'm not above that. But I will say, I did say to one of my buddies who has the stupid name on uh, Yankee and the Brit Fantasy Football, I forget. It's something anus. I forget what he Oh, yeah, yeah. But I said to him, Maddie can have this fantasy win because I want that real win next week. With our records, I'll take the fantasy win because we're three games ahead of everybody in our league. Okay, moment. fair enough. Yeah. Well, <laughs> let's just start running through this slate of games. I've picked now. the Cowboys, by the way, for that game, and Jay's picked the Vikings. Oh, That's, yeah, I didn't even think it, that. Didn't it, even just letting that, everybody right? know if they didn't get the idea. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so now you got the memo. We're going to move on to a game where maybe it's a letdown game, but I think the Bengals just walk the Jets, and I think it's not even close, and I don't even know what else to say. Yeah, the Bengals should walk the Jets. That, with Joe Flacco playing at quarterback for the Jets as well, then you can only really see it going one way. Another big week for Jamar Chase in fantasy leagues, if anybody wants to have him in their fantasy team. I've got him in mine. <laughs> I'll give you TJ, I'll give you um, T.Y. Hilton for him. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> it's always worth a shot. My dad always said it's worth a shot, even if they say no, right? Like, so, <laughs> worth a shot. No, I think we both agree Bengals win this game easily. I don't think it's a big deal. And I probably won't even watch it until a condensed version comes out the next day. I'll only watch it on Red Zone if it's there. But yeah, I'll probably just watch the five minute highlights after of that one, to be perfectly honest. And then I actually think the next game is going to be closer than people think. The Titans Colts, but I still have the Titans winning it. And I have them, like I said last week in a couple games, close up until the third, maybe the beginning of the fourth, and then Titans pull away because the Colts are not going to be able to handle that running game. And A.J. Brown is playing out of his mind. And apart from the Chiefs last week, that's how the Titans win their games. They wear you down, they wear you down, they wear you down, and then they go off. The Colts are playing a lot better football than they were playing at the start of the season. They've got over that injury bug. Carson Wentz is playing good football. He's only had one turnover this season, which is good for him. Yeah, exactly. That was a fumble, even though it was an interception. Is that given a fumble? fumble It was knocked out of his hand. Yeah. That was Carson Wentz-esque right there. Yeah, that's the the way that Carson Wentz gives away turnovers. But uh, (laughs) yeah, the the Colts are getting better. They're not quite there yeah i've got the titans in that one as well all right another game that's not even going to be close rams titans or rams texans the texans are going to get walked can they please stop abusing davis mills like it's not this kid's fault he didn't get to sit like i hear prognosticators and talking heads abusing this kid and it's like man he played one year at stanford what do you expect him to do coming into a team that has so much issues going on and the Deshaun Watson stuff hanging over their head. And the only reason we're not hitting Deshaun Watson, you guys, right now is stay tuned. We'll have a separate video about (laughs) potential trades with Deshaun Watson. But the Rams walk away with it, and I think they're resting players in the second half. Yeah, the the Rams. So there's been games where I think, like, the Texans are just garbage, so they're going to get beat. 
but they could be a bad matchup for them. But the Rams are an awful matchup for the Texans. Right. Like this, like, if they were to pick a team that they wouldn't want to face, it's a team that can <coughs> rush the passer. Can It's the team that can rush a rookie quarterback in his face as well. It's like edge rushing is a totally different feel than getting rushed right up the middle, right in your face. And a team that is just high octane in every single position in their offense as well. And it's just not a good matchup for them. It's going to be a big win, big win for the Rams. Yep. And then on to the Steelers Browns, which should be a closer game. Um, and all the rumors coming out is Mike Tomlin going to be the next head coach of USC. Well, he said, and I'm paraphrasing, shut up. You guys are being fucking ridiculous. There is not enough money in the world to get me to walk away from the pro job I have right now. Like that's pretty much what he said. Yep. And, he didn't use the word fuck, but he used the word bullshit and everything else in the <laughs> middle of the thing. Tomlin was not happy about even being brought up into that. So I don't think there's any truth to it, except maybe USC wants him. But I think I, I'm going to pick the Browns winning this game with Case Keenum because I got zero faith in Big Ben. I've got the Steelers winning this game due to the fact that the Finally. Browns are just, they've got the injury bug and... The Steelers have played decent football at points during this season, and they they feel like a team that will win big games against the AFC North, just despite the other teams in the AFC North. That, but then they'll be shit against everybody else. That's and that's the kind of game that they're going for. I think they've got a bit too much for Case Keenum and an injury injury riddled Browns team, uh, especially in their defensive front. And then they've, they've finally gotten a semblance of a running game with Najee Harris now. So just run the ball, run the ball, run the ball. That's all I can say to the Steelers. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised if you were right either, but I'm going to ride with the Browns. I think that Case Keenum's good enough to beat the Steelers, but that's because, again, I just don't have faith in Ben Roethlisberger anymore. He's a first ballot Hall of Famer, do not get me wrong, but he fell off a cliff. Maybe it's the surgery, maybe it's whatever, but that's where I get worried for the Steelers. In the next game, Maddie, I really, really, really wanted to take the Bears in this game, and I tried to convince myself to take the Bears in this game, and I cannot do it. I just don't have any faith in that coaching staff. I don't have any faith that they can protect Justin Fields at all. And maybe we give Mike Shanahan or, or Kyle Shanahan too much credit. I don't think so, but that's the new narrative. I think Shanahan has those guys ready to come back, get this win against the Bears. I'm swinging big this week uh, in an attempt to three, three two, two, one, one. get in our picks race, pull away. So I'm going for the Bears. I'm going for every single potential upset there is this week for the win, right? So I've got the Bears winning this game due to the fact that the 49ers are not as good as people think they are. and hey, you got bigger not. balls than me. I wanted to do it and I didn't. You got bigger balls than me. They're just, but the 49ers are just not as good as people give them credit for. This is quite a bad matchup for them, really, because the Bears are really good on defense and the 49ers are terrible on offense. So it'll be a close game. And in a close game, you never know which side it's going to come out. And I just think the Bears have something. Justin Fields has a playmaker inside him that he will eventually be allowed to unleash. And in a close game, kind of like Jalen Hurts, if you get Jalen Hurts in a close game, there's every chance you can win it. If you guys are getting blown out, then there's no chance that Jalen Hurts can bring you back. I think Justin Fields might be a very similar kind of player to that, where if you get him in a close game, he might be able to get you over the top with just a play that he just makes that not many other people can make on the planet. And I just think, I just want the Bears to, if you're going to play him, then give him a chance to play his way. Yeah, and the only thing that makes me nervous about San Francisco is Josh Norman has become a liability. He went from a top corner in this league to a liability in under two and a half years. Like, yeah, he definitely. did. And the reason he's a liability, it's not that he can't play. It's his every single time a ball gets thrown his way. I swear it's fast interference. Yeah, and I, I just like the... It, it's in Soldier Fields as well. So that that kind of plays into it, even though the 49ers are what over the past two seasons, they're one and 10 at home, which is a terrible record to have. But yeah, I've, I've just got the Bears in that game. I've got the Bears in that one. It'll be a close Well, one. this is a game I'm very interested to see what you think. So I'm just going to give you my pick and get out your way because I think you're going to have a lot more to say than I will on the Panthers-Falcons. 
because I got the Falcons winning just because I think the Panthers are garbage. I've got the Falcons winning because I think the Panthers have fallen off a cliff. You can't get beaten by the Giants by as much as they did. And Yeah, yeah without Christian McCaffrey, you're screwed. Yeah, exactly. You can't be a decent, a decent football team after getting smoked by the Giants. We didn't talk about that in our review. They just fell apart. They're falling apart, the seams. Um, they'll find a way to bring it back. I, I, I like their coaching staff. I like that they've got good pieces. I still like Sam Darnold, but he needs to stop throwing picks. It's as easy as that. And when if you don't have a running game, then you're going to have a chance to throw more picks. Um, I've got the Falcons winning that one because the Falcons seem to be on a rise and the Panthers are on a decline and it's kind of coming into that situation. And now Kyle Pitts is balling out for the past 160? two games. 160? Yeah, the guy's balling out for the past two games. He's he's arrived, everyone. Kyle Pitts has arrived in the NFL. Definitely. And we're going on, we're just going to keep it moving because uh, like Pat McAfee says, how you do it, keep it moving because these games, man... <laughs> We got the Dolphins, Bills. I thought the Dolphins were going to be better this year than they are. The Bills are probably what I thought they were. I probably had them at five and one, I think, at this point, but four and two, so what? Like, I think the Bills just route them. And with everything going on, Flores seems to be losing the team. Nobody seems to be playing right in Miami. They gave up on two and nine games into his career. I'm not sure what's going on in Miami. I still don't understand what's going on with the Dolphins at all because they should have a top tiered defense they should they should have a top tier defense in every single way Xavier Howard looks like he's trying to get out the door Dallas go get him come on this is we've got a window here we've got a window go get Xavier Holland uh but they, they they seem to he seems to be wanting to get out the Dolphins don't seem to be just in a good spot at all and after their culture building seasons and getting 10 wins last season and just missing out on the playoffs I think it surprises everybody that what's going on in Miami and I yeah I've got the I've got the Bills winning that one as well just by sheer fact of I would have the Bills winning it last season as well if the Dolphins were in the same form as they were last season I just think the Bills are an incredibly talented football team that's a real package for anybody to try and handle well on to the next game which I think is actually going to be one of the better games of the week in the Patriots Chargers I have the Patriots keeping it close, but I have the Chargers pulling it out at the end. And it's just because I think they the Chargers have a ton of talent. They have a good young head coach, not better than Belichick, but he fits their scheme. And I think that Justin Herbert is just going to be the guy. Uh, yeah, I've got the Chargers winning that game down to the fact that Justin Herbert is a fantastic quarterback. They have a stacked team. I feel like they were a team that kind of is going to come off a bye really really well like they're a young team they've come out fast they could probably have done with that bit of a rest just to regather everything and and come back and I really like Justin Herbert and I really like the way their offense is built and their defense is not getting a lot of credit and the Pats as good as they were last week so on 54 points and that the, they're still a building team for me and they could reach the playoffs and I wouldn't want to face them in the playoffs we've said that uh, already but the Chargers for me are a team that are there and the Patriots are a team that are coming off and trying to get there still. And Justin Herbert is uh, one of the reasons for that. And their fantastic receiving core is really, really difficult to deal with. And their running game as well is fantastic. Yeah, I think it'll be one of the better games of the week just because like, I think that the Patriots will be able to keep it a close game. I think that, Belichick will probably out coach them a little bit in the end. I think Justin Herbert carries the Chargers. Um, Jags Seahawks, man, this is just must be the toilet bowl of the week. Um, I really didn't know what to do here to the point where I just gave in and said the Jags get their second win of the week. Three, Three two, two, one. This year. is going to be my upset pick of the week. The Jags are going to win this one. Coming off their big game in London, their first win, the Seahawks are shit um like re they're really they're just not good to watch the Seahawks I don't know whether that means like I don't know how terrible they actually are but they're just not a good team to watch their defense is bad even though they held the Saints to 13 points but the best defender in that game was the weather um and uh, so 
the Jags play badly against teams that have a great defense. That's where you can get the Jags. Uh, but the Jags defense should hold up, should be fine. Um, Trevor Lawrence gets his second win as a quarterback in the NFL. That was the quote of the week. Even though it's true, the best defender in that game was the weather. That was the <laughs> best quote of the week. It's so true and spot on. Like, That's right such a there. British thing to say. <laughs> well, I just said the most British thing by telling you it was spot on. So Yeah, you've been hanging out with me too much, man. Terrible. Spot on, mate. Spot on. <laughs> um, <laughs> so on to another game where, like, nobody's going to care about the outcome except for the team's fans is – the football team versus the Broncos. I don't know, man. This is another one of those games where I think like Von Miller's out. We just traded Steven Weatherly to the Broncos, which shows you how bad they need line help right now. That defense that was supposed to carry them ain't there. I'm going to give it to Washington and the future backup quarterback, Taylor Heineke. I'm giving it to the Washington football team. They're, they should be better than they are. Their defense is starting to show some signs of life. Like they, they're starting to kick a little. It's coming up to when they start to play Dallas. So of course their defense is starting to get, starting to play some actual football. Chase Young looks like he's walk woken up. You know, uh, is starting to pop off the screen again. Um, I've got the Washington football team in this, just because the Broncos seem to be really struggling. They got beat by a beaten up Browns team with Case Keenum and they'll get beaten again by a healthy Washington football team uh, with Taylor Heineke, who's still playing. He's going to be one of the better backs of backups in this league. His comparison is Ryan Fitzpatrick. He is, I agree. He is. He's Fitz magic. He's high Dini. Yeah. High D is go. that going to work? All right. I'll take yeah. it. <laughs> We'll go with that. Yeah, Taylor Hydini, uh, when he's playing really well, uh, it doesn't really work as well as Fitch Magic, but I'm going to run with it. Uh, yeah, but Taylor, Taylor Heineke is playing some great football in some plays and some shocking football in others, and that means he's going to be one of the bad backup quarterbacks in uh, in the NFL. The Washington football team need to get themselves a quarterback, and then they'll be fine, and they need to wake up their defense. Yeah, and that's the thing with even what you were saying with Fitch Magic. The reason he is a backup, and this is what I see out of Taylor Heineke, is Fitz magic goes from Fitz magic to Fitz tragic real quick sometimes. Yeah, and, so quick. And it's so weird. And it's just weird because, you know, everybody who plays in this league's got talent, but some guys can maintain it and some guys can't. And that's what happens. So I think you're right. Washington, and we've been saying this since the beginning of the year, just need a quarterback. Yeah, they, they yeah, basically they, they flip in drives. It's not like they flip game to game or quarter to quarter. They, they were able to flip in drives. It's incredible. Uh, but Taylor Haneke had more rushing yards than Derrick Henry last week. There you go. Yeah. Just that, started a week for that. That's probably a bad sign for your team, though, unless you have Lamar or Kyler. Yeah, I, I think it was, he busted one massive run, didn't he, last week against yeah. the Packers? I, I think that's what happened. It, he, he just busted a huge one. But he makes big plays. He's a playmaker. And I think against the Broncos, where they're going to keep it a close game, if you have the playmaker, then you're, you you might be able to get over the line. And I think the Washington football team have got this one. All right, on to the Buccaneers Saints, which I don't even think is going to be a close game. Nope. I think the Bucs are going to come in and they're going to, own this game handily I don't think besides maybe in the first half it's even close when was the last time the books came into a books versus Saints game thinking yeah we're just going to route them I wonder when the last time that happened was but yeah that honestly the books should win that game the way that the Saints look they should win that game it's a horror it's going to be a horrible game for James Winston I see this one uh those guys are coming for him. His oh, LASIK that defense eye... is getting better in Tampa. Ooh. Yeah, his LASIK eye surgery better be good. Otherwise, he's going to throw some serious picks, I'm afraid. But uh, yeah, T Tampa definitely, have, I think, have got this one. And I'm going to say the receiver that goes for the big yards in that game is going to be Antonio Brown because they just switch it from week to week. Whoever they decide is going to go for the big yards that week, I'm going to go for Antonio Brown this week. So this was very weird to me. Going into Monday night, with New York and the Chiefs, I literally had to think on this for a second, which I would have never thought would be the case. But I still got to ride with Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs since Mahomes cleared protocol. He's going to play. I just, 
if you lose to the Giants, your season's over. Yeah, definitely. And I've got I've got Mahomes winning this one as well. Just the Giants can't have two good games in a row, surely. <laughs> It'd be very oh, un New York like right now. Yeah, but, that's yeah. very, very not New York having two good games in a row. But um, yeah, Dan, Dan Jones <clears throat> is playing good football again. He's a good football player. We've said it. We 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 rate Dan Jones kind of highly on this podcast. We we like the guy. We're not in that whole get rid of Dan Jones. We're in the whole Dan Jones needs to get himself out of New York. It's not a good place for him to be right now. Like we like Dan Jones, he's fine. Uh but Patrick Mahomes is coming to town. After Pissed being off. questioned, he's being questioned for the first time. And I think this is the game we'll see him play. And the Giants aren't a difficult matchup for the Chiefs. If they had Saquon Barkley and a fresh running game, it would be a different story. But And they can run it. I, f- I forget who their running back's called at the minute. Devin Booker. Devin Booker can run. Yeah. But they don't have a good offensive line and they don't have a star running back in the backfield. So if you can't run the ball on the Chiefs, it gets a bit more difficult to beat them. Uh, and I like the I like the Chiefs in this game. I think this could be a big game for them. Yeah, and I like I said, if the Chiefs make the – nobody in the AFC wants the Chiefs to make that seven spot in the playoffs. Nobody. Yeah. Because yeah. the last thing you want to do as a number two seed is start your playoffs off with the Kansas City Chiefs. Yeah, I'm so, glad I played. I'm glad I played you in fantasy week seven and not week eight with Patrick Mahomes at the top of your fantasy team list. Well, all I know is I'm thanks to a couple other people. I'm still tied for first in fantasy football in my division. <laughs> so, okay, thanks to a couple losses, I actually think three out of five of us are tied for first right now, though. So, we'll see how fantasy keeps treating me. There's going to be some good games this week. There's going to be some clunkers, but I'm excited for this week of football more than I was excited for last week of football. Oh, I'm one. Well, obviously the Cowboys and the Vikings are playing each other, and we need to throw down a bet. But we'll do that before the game. Let's let's do a quick video and release it just before the game kicks off. Uh, to Sounds good decide to decide what the bet's going to be to to see if Dak Prescott's playing or Cooper Rush is playing. <laughs> that's fair too because i told you i won't hold you to the bet if cooper rush is playing because it's it's not a real bet then like you're just you know yeah and i didn't gloat too much la- i didn't gloat too much in the last video about the fantasy team i, I gave you the the benefit of the doubt with you the- might as well because if you eat it this week you're hearing it <laughs> And I'm a I'm I'm actually probably more of a sore winner than I am a sore loser. I lose very gracefully. Sometimes I don't win as gracefully as I lose. I lose so badly, but I win gracefully sometimes. I'm kind of just shit in both regards, to be honest. But you know, it doesn't matter. <laughs> All right, guys, thanks for watching. That is our week eight preview. I Hope you guys enjoyed. Check out our other videos and we'll be hitting you with a a Deshaun Watson trade video very soon. One world, one love. Deuces. Cheerio.